So you're getting ready to go again, Kevin? Soon enough. Anyway, we're going to try to, with the help of Ernie here, and I'm Kevin, Hi. and I am going to show you my very basic van build, and hopefully for you guys starting out like I was a year ago, you will see that you don't have to spend an absolute fortune to be able to go out and do this. So we'll come back and talk about the cost of the van in a minute, but right now I just want to show you what we actually did to it to make it comfortable. Sometimes I travel alone, sometimes I'm with a better half, and she's been comfortable enough. Uh, the longest trip we've been on is about 35 days. So for two people being in a minivan for 35 days, one, you'd better like each other, and two, you'd better have it laid out well. So this will prove it can be done and can be done without a lot of money. So the first thing when you buy any of these minivans, this particular one is a 98, 99, 2000 era Chevy Venture, but any of these you go with are pretty much all going to be the same as far as layout. You're going to have roughly 48 inches across here side to side at your least point. And you're going to get about 54 inches side to side at your widest point. So you are pretty close to being able to do a full size mattress for two people. As far as this bed, I see a lot of people do these beds and they do a lot that to me is a little bit of overkill if you're doing your first bed in a van. This is built, as you can see, out of two by twos, a couple of two by fours, basically some one by three slats, which is more than enough to hold a couple of 200 pound people. And I wanted this to be temporary to where we could pick it up and take it out if we ever needed to. So the van is still usable as a van? So the van is still usable as a van. These can be pulled right out. The bed can come out in two minutes. You could put the seats back in if you wanted to for somebody that's going to just be doing some weekend camping or whatever to start out. Oh, now, did you make the frame that we're looking at for the bed? I made the frame we're looking at. This is about a four inch thick mattress. When I have two people in here, this pulls out, makes a double bed. I'll show you in a moment. We would have two mattresses on here. But let me go back to exactly the way I made this and why. Because everything in any of these vans that you're doing is a trade-off. And you have to decide what trade-off that you're willing to live with. Okay. For me, I wanted to be able to have these doors open. I wanted to be able to sit up in this bed. I wanted to be able to sit on the edge of the bed and look out because the first trip I did, I was planning on doing a lot of beach camping, which we did. So as you can see, I wanted to be able to sit up in here at night, which I can. And the main thing, I wanted to be able to sit like this. Two people, two doors open, can both sit here like this because I didn't want to have to take extra chairs, lawn chairs, and all of that crap to keep up with. Because again, it's a minivan, limited space, what are you willing to trade off? I see people that build these beds really high so they have lots of storage. And if you have a really high bed, you're going to be sitting here at night with your nose three inches away from the ceiling. <laughs> I did not want that. That was the trade off I made. I wanted to be able to sit in this. So by doing that, I measured the distance that I had with the original seats that were in here subtracted four inches for the mattress, which give me this, which is roughly about eight inches high on this build. The storage crates I have are about seven and three quarter inches tall. Where did you get those? These come from Walmart. Okay. So again, very little space, but there is room for three. The third one is harder to get to, so I use it for tools, uh, tire repair kits, that sort of thing. This first one here is basically for dry food, some little knickknacks that I need to get to. I can pull it out, pull the second one around, and through this same hole, and the second one contains my clothes. So, 
everything is basically in three crates plus a machete and if we want to get off the subject talking about protection you probably do want something for protection be it bear spray be it wasp and hornet spray in case some psychopath happens to come around i've not had that happen yet but are these uh, accessible from both sides where you were sitting these are accessible from both sides if I am alone. If I have two of these, you know, the bed made out for two people, then you really can't get to it from the other side. They're all going to have to come out of this side. In order to get to that third one, you're going to have to either be alone or you're going to have to slide the bed back together in order to have access to it. And again, it's part of that trade-off. Yeah. You know. Uh, so the third one has tire repair stuff and tools that you hope you never need but it's a good idea to carry right right extra can of free on for the air conditioner the cable i need to be able to put free on in just basic little things like that uh you know a can of fix a flat things i need for the bicycle because this was another thing i wanted to be able to take a bicycle and i want to be able to do this easily without having the expense and the hassle of hanging a tire carrier off of the front or the back or the top of this van. In my case, I wanted this to be as simple as possible. So if I'm alone, I can slide the door open, throw the bike inside. Takes five seconds. I figured out different ways and finally the easiest thing to do when there were two of us and we had the bike we had the bed, we just left the bed made up, which was not my original intention when I have this slid out that I'll show you in a moment. And this all becomes a complete full-size bed for two people. It became too much of a hassle to put this down and take it off every day, which was my original plan. So when I'm traveling with the better half, what we do is we just leave the bed made up, we throw a tarp over top of it, pick the bike up and throw the bike in here on top of the bed. Okay, that makes Sometimes sense. the simplest solution is better than the more complicated ones that require more work. It is easy to overthink these things. Watching YouTube videos with all these people that have everything figured out, the problem is you have to figure out what works for you. Right. And as far as the bike, I bought a couple of bike locks. It gives me plenty of room so if I'm out, no matter where I am, even boondocking, I can tie the bike to a tree. I can lock it to a picnic table, and if I'm somewhere that I don't have any of those, I can simply chain it to the door handle of the van. So the bike isn't going to walk off in the middle of the night. Okay, let's uh, change subjects just a minute. Okay. Are you choosing this lifestyle? Yes. Is there a reason? <laughs> so, are you choosing this lifestyle or are you forced into this lifestyle? This, this is a choice for me. I have reached the point where all the things I was going to do someday, someday is now. Oh. I have decided. I'm not waiting another 10, 15 years and hope that I'm in the shape to still be able to do the things that I want to do. So you can still bike and, and yeah. hike and, yeah. and the things that you want to do with this I have lifestyle. worked. I have often worked more than one job. Uh, I've had several things going at the same time. Many years in life, I feel like I've already worked a lifetime. So hopefully I did enough okay. up to this point. Okay, so we'll, I will still work and I will still do some work from the road. We'll get more in depth in another video. Let's right. continue on with your van build. Just tell me what you carry there. Okay, here's the way this ended up working out. This is an extended model, which has an extra foot or so of space. And after having this bed in, that is about what I have back here. Uh, it's 12 or 13 inches. If you come a little closer, I just have a board to secure this. Runs all the way across the back. A couple of screws hold it to the bed. Now, there were things that I did not want to carry, just like I did not want a bike carrier. One, I did not want a roof rack even though Ernie was kind enough or a rooftop carrier even though Ernie was kind enough to offer me one when I started this little adventure about a year ago. Why didn't you want one? I didn't want it because one I kept reading that it knocked off three or four miles a gallon generally off the gas mileage 
which would have defeated the purpose of going with a minivan. The reason I wanted a minivan to start with is I knew this thing would get about 20 miles per gallon. Now, there were, the things I looked for in a minivan, I wanted the dual sliding doors so I would have plenty of air, and I wanted this, a van that this would lift up. So again, I would have more protection in case it rained. I don't need to carry seats because here's you a couple more seats. That's your back porch. This is my back porch. Okay. What about privacy? We all are concerned about privacy. Can you can you hang something off of that and create a curtain? You could, but I really I haven't found the need to do that, which we'll get into in a second. Um, of course, I do have all the stuff to cover up all of the windows at night. We'll come back to that. But for privacy, I haven't needed it. Here's what I have. I do have a portable toilet in here. Now, generally, I'm not in, staying in the same place for many, many nights in a row. That did happen on this last trip when I went out west. I ended up on BLM land, Lake Havasu. Still, we were just a couple of miles from town. But we did set this up. So, I do have... A shower tent there is a separate video on the shower tent you know shower tent slash privacy tent so you pop this thing out you set your toilet inside being with a lady on this last trip it was nice for her as far as a shower we do have this pump up shower this will be done in another video also all the parts for this all together 25 or 30 dollars most of the time we were somewhere that we could take a shower every day, except again when we were out west on BLM land for days at a time. So in that instance, we did need this shower. And what you were talking about for privacy, if you're on BLM land, you're pretty much away from people, as far away from people as you want to be anyway. It's not like being in, in an RV park where you're stacked on top of people. You've referred to as out west, so in the east we have this problem. In the east we have this problem, right. We're in the Virginia, Tennessee area. Uh, when you get out west, you're talking New Mexico, Arizona. For us eastern people that have never been out there before, yeah, privacy is not as much of an issue out there. So I really didn't feel the need for that. As a matter of fact, when we did showers, all we did was threw a couple of towels on the ground, set our little thing out in the sun, uh, let it warm up had our shower and we were good to go. These two carriers, I do not have any solar in this vehicle. One for ice, this one for dry food. It is just the necessity. A little more food up here, some utensils. This little carrier we can set out if we do have a picnic table and have all of our forks and napkins and stuff in this. This is just a basic little automotive carrier you could pick up anywhere. When you talk about having food with you, I know your channel is all about free and almost free, best deal possible. True. The, when do you choose to go out and have the good meal and you're not cooking in the van or making a sandwich? That's a personal preference. Depends on where, where you're at. And one of the things we'll get into in another video again, because your two biggest expenses are going to be fuel and food. So we'll cover those in some other videos. But as far as the basic ways to do this, you know, it's as simple as can be. A couple of cans of propane. There's our stove. We have a little coffee pot that will go on the stove. So you have everything you need in this one little section. Simple as possible. I do have a little fan. I do have a battery pack that will recharge off of 12 volt. And I'll put the links to these some of these items down in the in the description yeah look at the products you're showing do you have an amazon store yet you're fairly new at this i am uh i don't have these things linked to where i make any money off of it at this point i may in the future so if you do buy from a link that comes from a description in this video hey you might help me i might make a few cents as far as why I didn't do solar on this thing yet, one, I didn't know how long I was going to keep this van. Uh, I didn't know whether I was going to go out there the first time and absolutely hate this. So I decided rather than going the solar route, all I needed to run basically was, was a fan to be able to stay comfortable at night. This little less than $200 battery pack was able to do that. 
and I was driving enough during the day I could plug this in to 12 volt back here and it would charge as I was driving down the highway. Okay, let me get to something that we haven't brought up. Okay. If you're watching this video, this may be a question that you're wondering. How did you come about this rather than just the regular camping in a tent and seeing the, the sites out west that people in the east always dream about? Where did this idea come up with sleeping in a minivan? I'm going to go over this in a whole video later on, but the short version of this is a couple of years ago I decided it was time for various reasons to start traveling. I took off on the first 30, 35 day trip in a car, uh, basically a, a Toyota Corolla, okay, with two people. We were staying in hotels. We didn't know what we were doing. We knew nothing about BLM land. We paid $35 a night to pitch a tent a few nights, and we spent a lot of money. And when I came back from that trip, I thought, man, I really enjoyed this, and this was always what I worked for was to be able to travel someday. But if I was going to do this in any meaningful way for any length of time, I was going to have to figure out how to get the cost of my accommodations down. Okay, as far as storage, in the back of this van, particular van, you have storage on each side and a little cup holder so you can throw glasses, whatever, in here. Your storage in these sliding doors on this side, I keep a CO2 detector and a fire alarm. Uh, also keep some bear spray, some things in case, you know, the wrong person walks up to the van, we have some protection. In the same door panel on the other side, we have other things like that that, you know, you just need to get to put your hands on. For front door storage, also kind of his and hers. You're going to find mosquito pellet repellent in each one. You're going to find hand sanitizer. This door, you're going to find tire gauges, different things like that you may need. Your door on the other side, we have binoculars, magnifying glasses because we're old and don't see as well, uh, scissors, more mosquito repellent, more sunscreen, keep things that you're going to use close or need at different times, like a pair of scissors, keep those things handy. Don't set yourself up to where you have to spend 10 minutes digging through containers to find things that you're going to need. Up here, we have some motion sensitive lights. You can get these in a pack of two, three, four. I'll leave some links to this also. These will recharge in the sun, solar powered. Velcro is your friend for many things around the van. So just on glass on each side on the back, we can slap these on at night. Hand me one of those if you would, please. Slap it on, just that simple. Now, if you go to get out of the van on either side, whatever you're doing, you have a light. If you walk around to the back, you have a light that will automatically come on. If someone walks up on you, it's going to trigger the lights. Now, in the middle, this is just a fiddle console, four cup holders, little locking compartment, just a place to store your cables. Um, if you're using something like a Garmin, anything like that, just gives you a place to put everything, keep everything nice and tidy. And again, these things you can pick up probably $40 to $50. You can probably find one at Yard Sale or Craigslist for five bucks. And all of this extra storage is going to be very, very valuable. The main thing is not only having storage, but having things where you can get to them easily when you need to. Headroom. Okay, headroom, I am roughly 5'10ish. Uh, still a few inches so like I said this is the way I built this this is the way these seats were this bed is the height that the original seats were in here this is how much headroom you had if you were sitting in one of the seats that came with it and that's the way I wanted to build it because I just wanted to be able to sit on this eliminate chairs be pulled up to the ocean and enjoy ocean breezes uh, and it worked out, it did exactly what I wanted it to.
But again, this is the trade-off that you have to decide which one you're going to make. Because if you want more storage, if you want to be able to put giant totes under the bed, then you're not going to have this kind of room in here. And when you're asleep at night, your head's going to be here six inches from the ceiling. And if you're not used to being in something like this, you know, a lot of people, that's going to make them awful claustrophobic if your head is up here. You know, and you have so little space in between. So that's why I chose to build this low. I wanted this usable space. Last thing, when this bed is pulled out, and I guess I need to show you that, so if you'll just stay there for a second, Ernie. Okay, we'll watch the we process. We did carry a tent. We basically, little tent, we didn't stay in this. We basically seldom ever put this up. But if you're on BLM land, you know, and you're camping, you're going to be there for a few days in a row. It really doesn't hurt to throw throw a little one up, even though you're going to be in a van. Just because you can throw a couple of your little things out of the way, boxes and things that you don't need. I have been to a local campground that's within a day's drive of here that you could not leave your campsite, even though it was paid for, abandoned. There had to be something on it. Okay. So you had to leave a tent or something on it. Okay. Yeah. And I have been to other campsites where people will come in there two or three days early and put a tent up kind of to mark their spot before the weekend whether that's right or wrong is debatable but but you do see it so yeah. uh, there are are uses for having a $20 tent but we'll go over at the end just the cost of all this stuff but you'll see the cost of this stuff is very very cheap compared to a lot of the van builds that you you see other people do and it's great for those people that go, hey, I'm going to go live in my van for years and I need to put all this wood in here and all this insulation. But that's not what most of us are going to do, especially starting out. And a lot of people just don't have the money to do that starting out. You know, the main thing is just to get started. You have to decide when to go. And I don't know, we'll get into some things on this van and, and what I paid for it and such later, but the reason I went ahead and bought this van the day I did is I needed to get started. And I, while I probably didn't get the best deal I could have gotten, it was a great van because I just needed to get started. And I knew if I didn't get started, I, something else in life was going to come up. Something else was going to change job-wise, family-wise, illness-wise, whatever it was. So I had to just go. And... So I bought the van, did the bed within the first two days, you know, about $30 in material, uh, you know, got $100 in mattresses and, and, and went from there with what we needed. And a lot of things I thought that we would need, we didn't. And a lot of things we took on the first trip, I don't have in here anymore. Because it's amazing what you can get by, how little you can get by with. And the more crap that you carry, is the more crap that you're going to spend time moving around from place to place. You're constantly moving. You're trying to get ready for bed. And you're trying to move all this crap up here into the front seats. And it's, you, you just don't need what you think you're going to need. As far as the bed itself, this isn't the world's best design. There are much, much better designs that you will see from people. But for simplicity, it simply see that's enough there we go see that it simply works it slides out you drop the other mattress on this side you're good to go can and you, you still can have you lift you the mattress up your storage here i want to see what's under there oh your window shades all the window shades are under there but you can kind of see how we oh. in order to get these to fit together how you crisscross these uh, slabs oh, gotcha gotcha understand Nice. And it's very inexpensive, uh, and it works. I mean, this will hold a tremendous amount of weight. It, the weight has never been a problem. And it's very quick, a few seconds to shove this thing back together, throw the bike in, and take off down the road. Because I see a lot of videos from other people, and they're spending a lot of time, even though they're in a van, they're spending a lot of time setting up, tearing down. I didn't want that.